It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to jump on that Sharp Interactive board. We got nine months worth of numbers from Canon. The numbers look good. The operating profit looks good. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to focus on the operating profit. The revenue numbers are going to jump around based on the Forex. So will the operating profit. But it's only going to be those friends of ours that have operating profit that are going to navigate through these challenging times. These OEMs have to get rifle disciplined and they have to start producing more operating profit. The good news for Canon is they're disciplined and they always produce operating profit and they have great goals in the operating profit percentages. I do have a couple of concerns regarding Canon and I'll share those in today's episode. But before I do that, I got to do a correction. When I was talking about Konica Minolta's numbers, I forgot the decimal point between the five and the three. And I didn't want anybody at Konica to think they were sitting on $53 million in operating profit for the first six months of FY 2023. When I did that episode, I was focusing on the fact that they had a 0% operating profit for the whole company. And that 0% is because they only have 5.3 million operating profit on a top line revenue, 3.6 billion. So I wanted to make that correction. Yeah, you know, 0% is terrible. It is what it is, but it sure as hell isn't 53 million operating profit. I want to make sure everybody realized it's only 5.3, giving them that 0%. Konica Minolta is not projecting a whole lot of operating profit for their FY 2023. And I don't want anybody that works there to believe that they're sitting on 53 million. They might not work as hard. And Konica Minolta needs to do everything humanly possible to keep that company as a going concern. Now let's talk about Canon. Canon's top line revenue was 20.2 billion. They had an operating profit of 1.7 billion, 8.6%. Congratulations, Canon. These are nine months worth of revenue. Look at the printing business, 11.4 billion top line revenue with an operating profit of 1 billion, 9.2%. Fantastic. Congratulations. You know, when I look at Canon and I compare them to Konica Minolta and I think about these two conglomerates, these two Japanese conglomerates, a lot of their business units, their diversifications, if you will, are very similar. I mean, we can start out with the printing business, obviously. But, but ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to share something. I kind of put these, these folks side by side. And when you think about the printing business for Canon, it's much, much bigger in revenue than Konica Minolta's print, printing business. But they always just crush them on profitability. Canon always crushes Konica on profitability in the printing business. And, we, and when you think about the percentage ratios over there at Konica Minolta, halfway through the year, they're sitting on 3% for their printing business, which includes the digital workplace and the professional print. And of course, I still question the operating profit they actually share because they have these massive losses that they keep dumping down there in that corporate, etc. But when you think about it, Konica Minolta, you know, when was the last time you seen them end a year in the printing business with 9, 10, or 12% operating profit? I don't think you could remember that far back. Look at this imaging business over there at Canon. You know, Canon, the imaging business, that's their, their camera business, if you will. That thing does 17.7% operating profit for the first nine months of this year. When you look at Konica Minolta's industry business, and that's their, their industrial lens business, that's the best unit, business unit that Konica has by far. It's their best business unit. I've talked about that in the past. It's sitting right now for six months at 8% operating profit. But at the end of the day, when you compare their, their, their business, which was based on the Minolta acquisition, it's the, 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 the camera, the lenses and all that stuff, you know, it's 8% where Canon's sitting on 17.7%. When you look at Canon's medical business, it's sitting on 4.6 operating profit. We all saw the healthcare business over there at Conic Minolta. It's a train wreck disaster. Six months into this year, they're at 28.6 million in losses in operating profit. And so you can see this stark difference between these two companies. You know, one is focused on profitability and one is focused on what I've been saying for a long time, chasing fantasies and not delivering, not delivering on the fantasies they catch. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at this print business for Canon because I have a little bit of a concern here. You know, back when Xerox was trying to buy HP, Canon came in the marketplace and said, if you buy HP, we're going to end our relationship with HP. Remember all that? I've done some episodes on that. But, you know, here's an article that was written back when that happened. And, 
This article was saying that Canon gets 14% of its total revenue from HP. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not 14% of Canon's print revenue. That's 14% of Canon's total revenue. Let's put that in perspective. The nine-month revenue for Canon is at $20.2 billion. 14% of $20.2 billion is, is $2.8 billion. $2.8 billion represents 25% of Canon's print business. And what's the profitability of that HP business to Canon? Because that's a big number. And that's something that I'm sure Canon is paying attention to. And I would say this, you know, of all the players in our space, I don't believe there's another OEM or major player in our space that's getting 25% of its revenue from one customer. Right now, things are okay. It's working out. But HP is going to publish their numbers. They're going to have one of the worst year-over-year declines in the company's history. We all know that HP can get pretty desperate in some of their business tactics. So how are things going to change as the industry continues to get pressure? Pressure from innovation and digitalization and all the things that are going on all around us. The fact that people print less tomorrow than they ever will today. There's a lot of things impacting our industry. And having one customer represent 25% of your print business is, is, is pretty scary. But overall, for nine months in, if you look at the print business by its divisions, you got the office group did $4.8 billion. Prosumer did $4.7 billion. Production did $1.9 billion. Total sales of $11.4 billion. $1 billion operating profit and 9%. That's fantastic. Congratulations, Canon. But this is a concern. I wanted to do a comparison because, you know, our industry, a lot of these folks have aspirations, and Canon's no different than everybody else. They got goals. They set goals. I believe Canon actually sets goals that are tough. In other words, they're not the poll voter without the poll. They're actually setting goals that, that are meaningful. They want to have a 12% operating profit percentage by the year 2025. That's a goal they're setting, you know. In FY 2022, they were at 8.8%. We'll see where they end up in this year, but you know, reality is they're probably going to be 8.8 or 9 or maybe even 9.5%. So getting to the 12% is feasible. Whether they get there in 2025 or 2026, 2027, we'll see. But they have the ability to get there. I wanted to compare that to, to, to Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, I had to go back 11 years to find a year where Rico was like 6% operating profit for the whole company. It was 2013 and it was only at 5.8%. I want you to think about that. We're talking 11 years they haven't been able to get to 6% operating profit. You know, FY 2022, they ended up with 3.8%. I just looked at their financials. They just came in for their second quarter, first half. For the first half of 2023, they're sitting at 1.8%. Why is it? Why is it that, that, that we got some players in our space? When I think about Canon and Kyocera and some of these players that can actually get this, you know, very, very close to a double-digit percentage. And, and we got Rico and, and, and Konica that just can't make operating profit. I will tell you this. I feel a hell of a lot better about Rico maintaining as an ongoing concern than I do Konica. But still, these operating profits are way too low. And our industry's got to figure this out and figure it out quick. I shared this when I was doing a comparison with Canon and Kia Sarah. But, you know, this goodwill that they have on their books at, at Canon is 20% of their assets. And that's a troubling number. I don't think it should be more than 5 or 10%. You know, They're, uh, they have 37.24% of their assets are encumbered. That's good. I mean, we know that, that, that Konica was like 64% were encumbered. So, you know, Ken is doing a lot of things right. And, I, you know, you, 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 at the end of the day, they, they're, they're running a great business. My biggest concern in all reality with them is the HP relationship and where, what, what that could, how that could impact them. And I would like to see them get some of that debt taken away. But this is a slide I shared when I was talking about selling general and administrative expenses. Remember, I started this out by looking at Konica. Konica, 
I mean, their top line revenue at $3.6 billion. Their cost for selling and general administrative expenses, $1.6 billion. It's 45%. It's, it's high as hell. When you look at Kia Sierra, it's at 24%. When you look at Canada, it's 30%. 24%, 30%. Controlling cost. 45%? Cost way out of control. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I believe that the OEMs are going to have to get more aggressive in how they go into the marketplace and relate with their competitors. Let's just say that. I'm thinking about Canon, for instance. Canon has a really good industrial print business. In their production space, and, and you know, the thing about these OEMs, none of them, they're not really, really detailed in how much of, they're going to, they projected to do $2.6 billion in the production space for their forecast for FY 2023. How much of that $2.6 billion represents the type of equipment that Canon sells or Konica sells in their industrial print space? The Konica industrial print space is going to do $230 million worth of business in FY 2023. That's a small amount of money in the industrial print space when you think about it. Quite honestly, Konica should be questioning why they're even doing it. Could Canon put a strategy together to get aggressive to take Konica out of the industrial print business? And folks, this sounds a little bit aggressive, but that's really what we got to do going forward. You know, I'm going to end it with this slide. I want us to all think about it in the industry. The time is now for consolidation or elimination strategies. I don't necessarily think it's going to be about OEMs buying OEMs. I don't think that's re reality. I think it's going to be about some, some consolidation, some cooperation, as we see with Toshiba Tech and Rico as an example in the manufacturing piece. But the OEMs have to have to do it now. Now's the time, the next couple of years. Or it's getting too late. The value of the print business and some of these OEMs is worth a whole lot more than other OEMs. And they're going to have to figure out how they're going to collaborate or how they're going to eliminate each other. And they're going to have to build strategies to do that. And those strategies are going to be pretty aggressive. Because as the industry continues to be disrupted and consolidate and get pressures from innovation, the competition is going to get really, really tough. And our industry needs to prepare for that toughness because it is coming. Because betting on the future on unrealistic optimism based in fantasy must end. These OEMs running around talking about pure nonsense and, and you know, the pie's the sky and we're the greatest in the world and buying trophies and throwing them all over their website, that's not going to help you get to where you need to go. Where you need to go has to be based on reality. And more importantly, you better have the operating profit and the discipline to achieve those realities. Because everybody watching me knows this, status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see you all tomorrow.